Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, wherever you are watching in the world. My name is Sean Driver. This is the Red Horde, and it's a hors d'oeuvre. It's been a minute since we've done one. What is a hors d'oeuvre? It's where we look off at the off-the-pitch events that end up affecting things on the pitch in League Two. And this time, we're going to look at Mansfield Town, Accrington Stanley. The game was postponed. It was canceled due to a waterlogged pitch. And I was curious, what do the regulations say about this? What circumstances, penalties, processes are in place to ensure that these events don't happen? And what are the guidelines that the teams have to follow? I didn't know, so I jumped into the regulations. We're going to get into it, so uh, let's do that. April 2nd, Easter Monday just happened. All of the games get off on the ground running. Uh, a wonderful weekend of football, except for Mansfield Town, who hosted, or was supposed to host, Accrington Stanley, but didn't get the job done, didn't get the game started. Um, and so that's been postponed, and they'll make that game up. And as I said, we wa I wanted to figure out what were the circumstances of that. If you haven't been here before... Um, hit that subscribe button below if you like this content we do watch parties it's been a while since i've done this off the pitch sort of event stuff um i've got a whole host of other <laughs> videos that need to come out that people are expecting and i'm and i'm putting together but this one i felt needed an immediate response so i wanted to package this one together and get it out to everybody and how did it come about well as soon as the mansfield town Twitter account announced everything. There were a ton of replies and responses as to what was going on, and I'm going to bring a sample of them up here. Davey Maxwell says, Embarrassing club should be deducted points. If you've got this po port drainage system, surely should be announcing it early. Julian Howard, Many fans incensed. Cannot believe the club are, di dis are disappointed and are not offering an apology. Are your ground staff up to the job? Are they working with a very poor ground? No other matches postponed. And that's really the tweet that got me going and wanted me to ask, what are the, what's the ground staff supposed to be doing? What is, what constitutes a poor ground? Um, and what happens when no other matches got post postponed? Joe Willis, tin pot and disgusting club for failing to get the game on and having poor drainage, which has made me feel bad, grumpy and wild. Needs new drainage installed this summer to prevent further postponements like this from the next season onwards, which makes the club a joke. Mark, AML, can't see it being playable on Saturday then given the f weather forecast. That's tongue-in-cheek because there wasn't really, as the weather's going to show you, uh, a lot of rain that, that fell in Mansfield. Um, Andy Hart, points should be awarded to Accrington. Julian, and I wonder, is that possible? We'll get into that. Julian Howard, think they've been watering it all weekend? Hmm, gamesmanship. If that happens, what are the consequences there? So if it's called off to give injured players time to recover albeit a conspiracy theory, so self-identified by Julian, but there are a host of injuries that Mansfield's dealing with. So what are the consequences there if there is gamesmanship? David Bradshaw, sure Brian Clough did something similar against Man United back in the day. I wasn't able to find that. If somebody knows if Nigel's dad did something like that, I'd be intrigued to find out. Um, I looked for it, couldn't find it. Waterlogged pitch, haha, barely even rained. You're right, it barely rained. <laughs> Lee Morgan, A, I live in Mansfield, there's not much been rain. Wind, wind up, surely? Potentially. What if it is? And how do you figure that out? What's the process? Lee Darby thought some pal left, must have left sprinklers on accidentally on purpose. Cy Lomas, nothing to do with having a load of defenders injured and getting them back in time for the weekend. Probably been hosing the pitch yourselves. And then Trev Ward, and we'll come back to this one later. Meanwhile, in Nottingham, ta-da! It's a sunny day. It's uh, The pitch looks great. Uh, well done, you pies. Mansfield Town... <laughs> Yet our game got called off by the match official. I'm sure a bit of water wouldn't harm as much as this war zone. And then you look at Barnsley, who was taken on Burton Albion in, in Burton, and that's Pirelli Stadium. And have a look at that pitch. We'll go through the other pictures. But my word, what a mess. So the announcement comes out, and it happens the day of, just right before kickoff. Mansfield Town sends it off. This is from the BBC. Um, the decision was taken following an inspection by the match referee. Aha, so we've got an inspection from the match referee, but what's the process for that? Um, is it in the regulations? What are the guidelines to what defines a waterlogged pitch? How does one determine it rather than the other? Um, they haven't come up with a date, and they'll have to figure something out. So I'm not going to address really in this video how late the notice was, but that's an obvious problem, and, and one of serious disrespect to the fans. If other teams can do it, Mansfield, I would suggest, 
owes it to others here Akron and Stanley fans who have a fair distance to travel, our wheels moving and on the go, and have to turn around and end up going back because they're getting word that the game was cancelled. Um, December 8th, right before the December 9th game, Barrow let Gillingham fans know 24 hours in advance, and, and they said they did that in a Sun article to avoid supporters making unnecessary journeys, and the decision was made to postpone tomorrow's game, so they cancelled it a full day in advance. January 18th, Stock, or sorry, Salford um, let Colchester know the day before. That's in a Sun article. Um, and, and there they say Colchester supporters in a Sun article as well. Colchester supporters would have been getting ready for tomorrow's 500 mile, 10 hour round trip tour uh, and f- from Salford. So despite the disappointment at the cancellation, fans appreciated getting the news in plenty of time. One said, oh well, at least uh, away fans get a day's notice. It's courtesy, folks. Uh, and that process needs addressing from Mansfield. But I'm, I was interested in the rules, the processes, the consequences, if any. What is a waterlogged? What are the obligations of the Mansfield Town grounds t- team, of the, the owners, of what's the process? And so it's regulation time, and let's jump into it. And where do we go? EFL regulations. Link will be down below if you want to suss all this out. I'm going to put the photos up here. And it all starts in Section 3. Uh, 8.4, Regulation 8.4 of Section 3 reads, A club which does not comply with the appropriate criteria set out in Part 3, Club and Stadium Facilities, shall be guilty of misconduct. We'll get into what that means. Misconduct, just remember that. Subject to the provisions of Regulation 8.5 and any dispensations granted by the Board. So let's jump into what is Part 3 of Appendix 1. Uh, That starts with ground maintenance, and this is really the source of just this overarching duty that, that the clubs have uh, in, in the EFL and it says the club is to be responsible for the maintenance of the pitch and for the general maintenance of the ground including but not limited to ground safety the club must ensure that adequate arrangements are in place to maintain its pitch in good order as required under regulation 13 further under part 3 it adds another one regulation 27 subject to part 3 of appendix 1 uh, section 27 says the playing surface has to be grass it has to be flat but at 27.4 it says each club shall take all reasonable steps to maintain its pitches in good order and the league may require a club to take such steps as it shall specify if not satisfied that the adequate standard of the pitch is being maintained including but not limited to the league commissioning an independent report on the state of the pitch by the club and I say that's a natural consequence that has to happen here that independent report with the costs borne by Mansfield Town should be obligated by the EFL at minimum Um, So let's go further through the regulations. I know it's a little bit dry, but it's necessary to have them. Sections 31, 32, and 32, 4, which they don't have a 32, 3. And I'm going to assume that's just a typo error by the lawyers who ended up drafting this. They'll have to revise that. Uh, It it flows that 32.4 is supposed to be 32.3, but just follow along and see if you get there. Uh, It's a weird one that somebody just, I think, made a whoopsie. Um, Anyways. 32.1, it says each club will use its best endeavors to ensure that each match under the jurisdiction of the league takes place on the date and the time that it was fixed for it. 32.2, any club that fails its obligations in respect of any match under the jurisdiction of the of the the league on the appointed date or causing the league to suspend any fixture shall be deemed guilty of misconduct. Misconduct word comes again. We'll find out what the penalties are for that. Unless the club, unless the club is successfully able to demonstrate that regulation 32.3 applies and the burden of proof will rest with the club. Okay, so there's an exception. They can get out of jail. All they have to do is something under 32.3. We don't have it. But 32.4 does give the exception. So I think that's what it is. And it says, the club will not be deemed to be guilty of misconduct in accordance with regulation 32.1, Um, which I think is also 32.2, where it is able to demonstrate that the dominant and effective cause was an event outside the control of the club. So that's one, an event occurred, um, whether or otherwise. 32.4.2 says the club could not have reasonably foreseen or reasonably anticipated and remedied the consequences. So something unexpected, an event occurs, or they couldn't have foreseen the event. If they can prove that and they have the burden of proof, the onus is on the club to show it, they've got to show that they couldn't have stopped this waterlogged pitch from happening or misconduct. And then if they fail to do that, there's some costs that occur. They have to reimburse some money uh, to the to the opposing club, et cetera, et cetera. And that's all, all fine. But now we know we've got misconduct, right? Unless it's proven otherwise. And so what happens if there's a disciplinary hearing or an investigation or all those sorts of things? And what can the league do? And really, it's it's a it's a broad 
power that's given to the EFL to to investigate. The league has the power to initiate and prosecute disciplinary proceedings against any person subject to the regulations. Move down to 84.2, or and that's what the league can investigate. They can investigate any suspected or alleged breach. But it says any complaint, allegation, or suspicion of financial or other irregularity. So uh, potentially other teams that are in the league, um, you know, those that are in the battle for for playoff auto promotion spots might be interested in flagging this and sending it off to the EFL and say this constitutes an, uh, an other irregularity. EFL, you need to have a look at this. Um, 84.2.3 misconduct. Ta-da! You've got misconduct obligation uh, you shall have the power to investigate them so here goes that investigation regulation 85 then gets into what are the disciplinary powers you can if, uh, do a, a fixed penalty in accordance with provisions of section 88 you can go to a disciplinary commission you can refer to the matter to the fa um, that's not applicable here um, there's financial regulation breaches and and basically broad powers to to do whatever the efl seems fitting uh, remembering that at all times it is the club that has the burden the onus to prove that they were reasonable in their response or they, they had no ability to deal with the event. And so they go through the, all of those things and at section 93, at the end of the day, what can they do? Order something be done, specific performance, which is just basically requiring that what was agreed to gets done, uh, issue a reprimand and slap on the wrist. They can order payment, they can deduct points, all sorts of things. All of them are, are at play or, or order any other sanction as the disciplinary commission may think fit broad broad investigation powers broad penalty powers uh, it's a wide open thing so i thought to myself you know what i want to know what constitutes a waterlogged pitch what constitutes an unplayable field what constitutes a frozen pitch what are the mechanisms and the processes that are in place for the club for the police for the fire for safety for all of those things to end up saying this game is not going to go ahead and i can't find it in the regulations i couldn't find it in the premier league regulations i couldn't find it in fifa if somebody else is better at do searching that stuff than me go ahead and figure it out the only thing that i could end up finding was an article from londonfootballscene.co.uk that said, and this was contrasting National League and, and non-league to the EFL, and it says, in comparison, EFL protocols are slightly different and arguably more disjointed, enforcing a balancing act between clubs, officials, in consultation with safety officers who assess the conditions around the ground, with differing voices and opinions, often combined with miscommunication and personal agendas, trigger, it can be quite difficult for a final decision to be made with the EFL aware and appreciating it's not currently the most ideal situation. So there is a video that's out there and I'll put the link down below. It's from the EFL that talks about just this circumstance. There are no specifics that are provided. You can waste your time watching the four or five minute video that I did. They don't give you any details except to say there's a process in place and they're all going to get together and they're going to have a chat and they're going to cancel it. But they don't say how much of the pitch has to be waterlogged? What is sufficient as far as a ball dropping and hitting the ground and going splat and not moving? How heavy does the, the pitch have to be for you to make the decision? And who can initiate the process? Is this Mansfield Town just walking up the referee, knocking on the door and being like, knock, knock, you should uh, maybe go and, you know, go and have a look at the pitch? Is it that simple? You know, we, we really don't want to get this thing going together. It looks really bad out there. You know, we've got these problems over here. Um, there's no process uh, that I can find in identifying when the as to the integrity of the league, you know, you look at operations, you'd anticipate that there would be a formalized mechanism for all of this to happen. It may be internalized. It may be just between the clubs, but why don't the fans know? I mean, we're the ones who are sitting here watching and now we're asking the questions. So the club Mansfield has the obligation to demonstrate that two things. There were two things and they're conjunctive. They have to both be proven. One, um, that the dominant and effective cause was something outside their control, that's one, and two, that that event that was outside their control couldn't have been reasonably foreseen. And I'm going to take a look at the pictures here just to kind of give you an idea as to how bad the pitch quality was. This is from a sun.co.uk article, and the photographs that were taken were provided by Richard Parks. And, and you can have a look at the field here. Does it look great? No, it doesn't. 
You've got the picture here looking at the midfield stripe and certainly there's boot prints in the ground. Uh, it does look somewhat boggish. Does Have I seen worse? Yeah, uh, Bradford, I've seen your stadium in the couple of games that I've been playing and they didn't look very good. Um, it, it doesn't look like it's poor quality. Could you have reasonably expected the rainfall? I don't know, we'll have a look at that. But that's the first picture. You've got another one. It can't really tell anything here. The, the grass actually looks pretty good, but it's all fuzzy. You can't determine anything from that photograph. This other one, it looks, you know, again, close to the midfield stripe looking towards goal and there's some questionable area there certainly and then you've got this picture of the outside this one's interesting to me because it doesn't look like a lot of rainfall is there um, but 90 minutes before kickoff and the game gets cancelled and you start to question well how much rain was there was this a reason was this an event that couldn't have been planned for was there a sudden rainfall but maybe before that I'll just bring up the other picture and do a side-by-side -side. this is Pirelli Stadium they played in this Burton Albion Barnsley played in this. This the other photo right below it didn't play in that. Tell me what the difference is between those two photos and why one's okay and one's not okay. Um, and if there is a protocol or a standard that says this the ball bounced two and a half inches off the ground when dropped from a height of three feet, so it was okay. Is that what the standard is? I don't know. Well, how, what percentage of the pitch looked like this versus what percentage was fine to run on? I, I don't know. Um, and what's okay? I don't know um, in any event. So let's look at the weather. Timeanddate.com does weather history. They've got a station at Mansfield. And so you're able to jump onto that website and look historically as to what the rainfall was and what the weather was at any particular time. Don't have to go back too far, which is, makes it easier here. And so I pulled up the, the week leading up to the, the April 1st game. So you go, okay, well, what happened starting at that point in time? To have a look at this graphic. And you can see that at overnight, this is from 6 p.m. till 12 a.m. on March 31st, you've got what's being described as drizzle. Now, it doesn't provide the precipitation there. Um, you did see those tweets that say it didn't rain that much. Um, I was able to get a source otherwise, but let's just flag that. We've got drizzle then over a period of six hours, and then you turn to the next day, and this is early in the morning, about 12 a.m., three hours before kickoff, and you have light rain. So we, this is a club that can't reasonably deal with drizzle and light rain, or at least couldn't in this instance. That's the event we're looking at, and it couldn't reasonably be dealt with. Is that what we're looking at? Okay, well, let's look at what the precipitation is. March 31st, 3.3 millimeters of rain over the day, March 31st. April 1st, 3.7 millimeters overnight, and that stopped at 9 a.m. And that's from a website called worldweatheronline.com, Mansfield Weather History, Nottinghamshire. And, and I went, okay, 3.3 millimeters. I mean, I'm from Canada. We use metrics, not imperial, so I get an idea. But for those that, that, that don't know the, what 3.3 millimeters is, that's two grains of rice over the entire day. It, it boggles the mind. Even if there isn't something nefarious going on, I'd suggest that that's not acceptable for a, a, a professional level pitch not be unable to deal with rainfall of that scope and magnitude. Um, you know, Colchester had a drainage problem. That was an ongoing concern. They had three cancellations. What did they do? They asked for a resizing. They eliminated the problem. I'd suggest that Mansfield's going to have to come up with some something constructive here and probably should. But that does turn me to the next question of, well, what if there is something going on here? I mean, you look at, there have been other cancellations, Barrow, Bradford, Walsall, a bunch of games leading up to match day 29 where they had a whole bunch of frozen pitches around the league. Um, there were FA Cup cancellations and international call-ups. Those are different sort of breed uh, and, and there's, there's rules in place for that. But when it comes to Mansfield, they've had three cancellations. Um, match day 14, which was October 20th, they were the only uh, game in, in the league that didn't get off on October 20th. They had uh, December 9th, uh, that was match day 21. They were one of five, so a little bit maybe different circumstance there. And then this recent one on April Fool's Day, they were the only only game that didn't get off the ground. And that's Mansfield as the home team playing in their stadium. Those are the three circumstances. Let's just look for, uh, situationally, what were the circumstances that, that arose at that time? October 20th, Mansfield was in the midst of a mad run. They had games starting every Saturday, every Tuesday, from Saturday, September 23rd, all the way through to November 11th. They had EFL Cup game with Peterborough on a Tuesday. They had an EFL Trophy game uh, Tuesday, October 10th. Then they postponed the 20th. And then they jumped right back into it Tuesday, Saturday. Tuesday, they had an EFL Cup game against Port Vale. November 4th, they had their FA Cup game on, against Wrexham. Then a trophy game on a Tuesday. Then a league game on a Salford. And so uh, 
Are you going to suggest that maybe there were some tired bodies, maybe some fatigue, and there was an opportunity to take a day off? I would look at the weather, look at the regulations, look at the get an investigation as to what was going on. I think that the facts maybe start to lean towards that being a minimum standard that has to occur. You go to December 9th, that game that was canceled, that was the very first time that Mansfield endured a, a winless drought, drought of two games. Not significant, arguably. Sure, I'll take that. But enough for pause. They just went through that mad run that we said of consistent games and cup matches that were tying things up. November 25th, they had a 2-1 loss to Swindon Town away. November 28th, they have a 2-2 draw to Tranmere at home. And then all of a sudden, we have a cancellation. Waterlogged pitch. Potentially suspect, need for a break. I mean, it, the question has to be asked because this one makes no sense to me. The one that happened today, April 1st, and what's the reality is there are a lot of injuries. You saw that the game, or if you saw the game, Wrexham and Mansfield, you had Hewitt who just returned from his ACL. He goes out with a knock against McLean. You've had Brunt with the leg that went wonky. You had a couple of guys who had head um, head incidents that they were taken off in the half and couldn't continue. Call it fatigue, call it burnout, call it poor form, call it injury, call it coincidence. I'll leave that for you to decide. But to me, the facts need to be looked at at this one. Um, you have to get that report that's paid for by Mansfield as a minimum requirement through the regulation. And Mansfield has to prove that they took reasonable steps to keep the pitch in good order. That's the minimum standard that they have to do. The next question comes, um, you know, what has there been for precedent? Well, let's look at Coventry City just two years ago. Um, there, this is uh, a matter in breach of the EFL regulations, and this is an agreed decision. So an agreed decision is one where it's drafted between club, between EFL. They suggest a penalty. The club says, yeah, we'll do that. They don't give a lot of facts, but all of those regulations that I went through are here and, and, and in format with a penalty. So let's look at what happened and what the facts are. Number two, EFL conducted investigation into a number of the club's missed fix fixtures. These are e early in the year, so not when it's strategic to do it. They just likely had a problem. I'm, that's what I'm going to suggest. Have I dove into it? Not really. Somebody can suggest otherwise. Happy to go and, and, and look at those questions if somebody can say, out of the gate, Coventry was trying to play silly buggers. I'll, I'll have a look at it. But this says... Um, the same regulations, 2.1 of Part 3 of Appendix 1 of Regulation 8, that's Section 2.1 and 27.4, which are the exact ones that I provided to you. It goes through the regular regulations that I've ended up providing to you as well about um, best endeavors to ensure that the, it's fixed and deemed guilty of misconduct and all that sort of stuff. And what was the agreed decision? A suspended sanction. Go to paragraph six and it says the EFL board invited the club to consider the following sanction. A five-point deduction five-point deduction that was suspended for the remainder of that season and the following season. And then you go down to, well, what does that mean? They had to pay a, a sum of 6,000 quid and they had to pay some costs to the teams that missed the games and that's all taken for care of in the EFL regulations. But then number four, the suspended points deduction shall be applied immediately upon any charge being proven or admitted relating to any further missed fixture of the club in the, that season or the following season. And this decision came out in December, so there's still half of the year there. That's a, a year and a half that if you have another cancellation, bam, five points is taken off. In the Coventry situation, it doesn't seem to fit, or there's at least no report, and I couldn't find, that there was any potential gamesmanship, any injuries that were going on, that the I didn't measure the rainfall, but here I look at the rainfall, two grains of rice, mm, what's going on? I, I got I got questions. No malfeasance with Coventry City. You're not going to get the facts because it's an agreed statement. But to me, that's the the minimum penalty that has to be issued. There's an, an obligation on the club to ensure that its groundskeeper and its ground staff have the the pitch capable of withstanding two grains of rice. That's where I'm at. The larger question that I think has to happen is if the EFL orders a report, and, and we'll probably never find out the details of it, but the question is, is are there gamesmanship afoot? And if there are, then that's not a suspended penalty that has to come out. That's an immediate penalty. And that's one that we've, we've got six games until the end of the year. And uh, I think the question has to be asked. So tell me I'm wrong. I'm sure there's going to be a lot of people, a lot of stags coming in and telling me I'm just a stupid American. You're wrong Canadian. Let's qualify it. Um, north of the border. But those are the facts. Six millimeters of rain couldn't get the game off. There were games happening on, on poor pitches throughout the country. As the Burton Albion one specifically involving Barnsley was a bad one. Bradford's been struggling forever. Colchester ended up finding a solution. I'm looking at that Coventry City decision and I'm looking to the EFL and I'm saying if integrity matters, you got to do something. And also to the EFL, you have a 619 page regulation handbook that has 
lots of stuff. It's a lot of stuff to do with youth, but I can understand why that's the case. But a lot of information. But there's no information regarding the, the, the process that's to be considered by officials or the board or the clubs with respect to the actual standard of what constitutes a waterlogged or a frozen or a whatever pitch. It'd be nice to have that information out there. And then also what the mechanism is, pitch, uh, pitch inspections should be obligated by the official pro in every single match, irrespective of any interference or discussion from the teams. Do I know whether that happens or not? I don't. But it also warrants consideration that do you send a fourth official out there the day before to be able to stop people from traveling? Have a little courtesy for the fans. Um, I think that the leagues dropped the ball on this one uh, as far as not having those in the regulations. I think Mansfield, even if there's no malfeasance, even if it is just coincidence, not being able to handle six millimeters of rain, and, and tell me there was more. I think that that's potentially, potentially evidence of some bad stuff but even if it's not coventry city applies suspended point deduction fire it up let's go on and hey game tomorrow tonight today in 12 hours time whatever it is uh doncaster taking on wrexham we do the watch party channel come and join in have a good time uh we'll chat i'm sure there might be some people in the, that pop in to say i'm uh wrong on this one and that's cool let me know why why i'm wrong i'm i'm happy to hear it uh, Sean Driver, this has been the Red Horde. I'll get this one packaged up. See you in a little bit. Cheers.